Okay, so our next speaker is uh, Professor Wang. Uh, is uh, okay. Yes, sure. Let me share my screen. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, let me give a very quick introduction. So, uh, Professor Yang Ziwang from uh, Northeastern University. Uh, his uh, research focus on water compression and the platform specific acceleration of uh, deep learning application. So he has uh, uh, many publications and uh, served a lot for a lot of uh, top conference and uh, uh, so which have like uh, over 9,000 iteration uh, citation. Uh, without further ado, I will let uh, Professor to talk about his uh, topic is uh, towards best possible deep learning acceleration on the edge. OK, uh, please uh, take away. Thank you. Yes, sure. Uh, can you see the screen? Uh, yes. Yeah, thank you. OK, so I'm trying to uh, introduce something on a compression, compilation code design towards the best possible deep learning acceleration on the edge. Uh, actually, uh, as we, we all know that deep learning is everywhere, but is not um, democratized enough because uh, many of the edge devices and IoT devices are still difficult to be equipped with deep learning. Uh, all they need to, at most, they can do very lightweight models. Uh, but actually, not. I mean, there are many exciting applications that we cannot rely on very lightweight models. All we need is the IoT is to be equipped with deep learning. So generally, we need a large model size, and then the large model size poses a lot of, lot of challenges. It is projected that the inference phase of the most deep learning systems will be deployed in the low power embedded systems. Uh, and typically, there are multiple sensor inputs and consists of uh, multimodal deep neural networks. And then this kind of systems have limited form factor and power budget. And also, there is a real-time performance requirement. It means that the performance needs to be 30 frames per second, or something like 30 milliseconds for each frame or each image. So this is a very difficult uh, requirement to satisfy that in every battery power system, we need to satisfy this requirement. So this is a reason that people are building uh, different kinds of deep learning hardware including the GPUs, IPJs, and also dedicated AI chips. However, those are also mostly for the high performance computing. And also, we cannot equip every place with this kind of high performance GPUs or dedicated AI chips. Still, most of the devices in the mobile and IoT are the general purpose devices, like mobile CPU, mobile GPU, or even lower end mobile devices. So our current mission is focused on the off the shelf mobile devices. Anyway, they are used in most places. So like the mobile phones and even lower end ones. And our goal is to achieve the real time performance of all neural networks. We see all different types of neural networks, except, except maybe for a few large ones, but for 90, 95%, we can make it real time on a mobile phone. So this is through our technology, so-called compression compilation code design, or CocoPi for short. So there are a number of model compression techniques, like weight pruning. In the weight pruning, we're going to reduce the number of weights and the computations. So there are multiple types of weight pruning like the non-structured weight pruning, where arbitrary weights can be pruned. However, it comes into limited actual deployments. The major reason is, first, is the prior work has a limited weight pruning rate, but even if we increase this, this is still difficult. The second is that we need a lot of index for the sparse format in order to compress the weight storage. And this kind of irregular bar structure actually causes a speed degradation on the CPUs or GPUs. So this is a difficulty that limits application of the general non-structure pruning, although the pruning rate may be the highest. The second type is a structure pruning, 
where we are going to eliminate the whole filters or whole channels. Or if we are seeing that in a weight matrix format, then whole rows or whole columns. So this kind of techniques may be more hardware friendly. And it can result in almost the same speed up compared with training a smaller neural network with the help of compilers. But it results in accuracy loss because of the cost granularity. So this motivates us to find a best, most suitable pruning technique that can combine the advantage of the structured pruning and also the non-structured pruning. And there is a weight quantization techniques. So there are a lot of weight quantizations like the binarized weight, ternary weights, two power weights, or fixed length weights. So weight quantization is hardware friendly. And also multiplication may be eliminated in binary, ternary, two power ways. So this is already a must do step in industry. But the issue here is that we are focusing on general purpose devices, like the mobile CPU or mobile GPU, or the mobile DSP. For this kind of devices, we cannot do arbitrary quantization. At most, we can do 8-bit quantization, and some devices even doesn't support 8-bits. So at most, we support some supports only 16-bits. So we need to follow the devices. Of course, we can be more flexible on IPJ or ASIC, also depending on the device. Uh, but as we focus on the general purpose, we need to follow some restrictions. Some prior work working on the weight clustering, like the IBM True North, but this kind of weight clustering is almost not used because the computation overhead is still there. And some of our prior work works on the uh, structure matrix, and also some early prior work workers uh, works on the SVD, the single wide load decomposition. Uh, in this structure block circulant matrix, I mean, we are going to de divide each of the weight matrix into different blocks, and we have certain structures in each block. And then we can use the fast Fourier transform to accelerate the computations. Yeah, but this may be suitable for some sort of neural networks, but may not be everything. So our motivation to find a unified joint solution of the weight pruning and weight quantization technique is through this technique of ADMI, that is a mathematical optimization tool. So our motivation is that both weight pruning and quantization are actually special cases of the general clustering problem. So they are compatible with this technique, ADMI. So we see that this weight pruning is essentially clustering because we are going to cluster a number of ways to zero and the rest of ways can be arbitrary values. The quantization technique is also clustering because we are going to cluster the ways into the predefined fixed quantization levels. And finally, our prior work on the block circulant matrix and so on are also clustering because we are going to divide each matrix into the different blocks and in each block, we have certain structures or clusters, like the green ways should be in one cluster, the red ways should be in one cluster, and so on and so forth. So those are both clustering techniques, so they can be solved using a unified solution. So in ADMM, we are going to decompose an original problems into two subproblems, and then they are going to be solved iteratively. Uh, using the mathematical optimizations. So consider the original problem minimized of fx plus g of x. We're going to find these x values. So for this problem, we're going to first write into minimize fx plus g of z, and the constraint is x equals z. This looks a little bit unnecessary because if x equals z, then why we need to have these two separate uh, uh, variables. This is because we're going to decompose into two subproblems, one in X and one in Z, and then they are going to be solved iteratively until convergence. In the first subproblem, we are given Z and we find the X. We are going to minimize this Fx plus a quadratic function of Q1 of X given Z. 
So in this joint with pruning and quantization, this is a first sub problem that we are going to minimize the waste. We are going to minimize the loss function, and then we are going to have two quadratic terms: one on the quantization, one on the pruning. So for this problem. This is our. This is have the same complexity through the stochastic gradient descent. Uh, this is essentially a DNN training with regularization. Then the second sub problem is given x and we find z, and this q2 is again a quadratic function. So now the key here is that this sub problem is optimal solution for the clustering like problems. In the joint with pruning and the quantization. Then this second sub problem is given the weight W and we find Z for the weight pruning and we find the Y for weight quantization. And we have the polynomial time optimal solution using Euclidean mapping. So theoretically, there is the optimal solution. And then we just find this optimal solution. So this is something like this is can, can be found for sure. So after we find Z and Y values, we go back to the first problems. Now they are given and they are fed here. And we are going to calculate this W again. So this is a dynamic regularization procedure. Now the issue here is that in some prior work on the weight pruning, there is already some fixed regularization work like IO1 or IO2 or group lasso regularization that we're going to put a penalty on the weights. This method is also regularization. It's only that it is a dynamic regularization. So why do you claim that this method can outperform the prior work that penalize the W? One of the reasons is that Actually, the, if we only penalize this W, this is not the goal of weight pruning because this will penalize and reduce the weight of all Ws. But weight pruning is not to penalize all W. Suppose that we are going to prune 90% of the weights. As long as this 90% of the weights are, are zero, the rest 10% of the weights they are going to increase in their magnitude because they need to compensate the effect that 90% of the weights are already there. But this kind of penalty are going to put again a penalty there and this leads to accuracy degradation. On the other hand, our method is the dynamic regularization that this penalty is dynamically regularized that as long as 90% of the weights are zero, and there is no further penalty. So we are going to having an advantage compared with the prior work. So if we go back to Alex Nash, where the original work oh, with pruning stars, actually we can see that we can have a significant improvement. Of course, this is already an old network, but we can see that with almost 100 times with pruning, we can still maintain the accuracy. And with 65 times with pruning, we can even got in a higher accuracy than the original accuracy. If we see some other data sets like IMNIS, as we can see, we can prune the number of ways by 700 times. There is only 600 ways remaining. This is even fewer than the input pixels because the input pixels is 28 by 28, which is 784. So it actually reduces the number of ways to be fewer compared with linear regression, but the accuracy is still 99%. So we can see the other results on the VGG and the ResNet, especially for ResNet, we can prune 10 to 20 times number of ways without accuracy degradation, which is still useful. So if we see the joint with pruning and the quantization, we also see some of the results. If we see this learned again, we can see that we can reduce the number of weights by 700 times while using an average of three bits for the weight quantization. And overall, the weight reduction rate is over 6,600 times. So this is two orders of magnitude higher compared with the prior work. If we see the rest of the work like ResNet, 
we can reduce by 100 to 200 times without accuracy degradation. But the thing here is that this is non-structural pruning, that the waste can be arbitrarily reduced. Can we actually achieve a real-time neural network execution on the mobile device using these above optimizations? The answer is it is very difficult. Because non structure pruning is very difficult for acceleration, and quantization using 3 bits, 4 bits, 5 bits is also difficult to be exploited in the general purpose devices. If we take this Yolo Wave 4 as an example, which is one state-of-the-art object detection on the MS Coco. If we use a TensorFlow Lite to execute this Yolo V4 on a mobile, it takes over 600 milliseconds. This is clearly far from real time. If we work on the non-structure pruning, seemingly we can get a good result. We can get eight times a reduction in the number of ways with only 2% loss in the average precision, MAP. Seems promising, but how much acceleration can we actually get on a mobile CPU or GPU? This is not supported in the prior acceleration framework. We have made our own compiler and acceleration framework, and we only get 40% acceleration using our own compiler. If we use filter or channel pruning, this is similar to training a smaller neural network. Then what we got is a significant loss of 19% MAP with the same eight times compression. Actually, this is already higher accuracy compared with tiny Yolo because that even getting more than 20% MAP loss. And this kind of loss, we think that it is not acceptable. So it seems that non-structure pruning is accurate, but not hardware friendly. And structure pruning is hardware friendly, but of course it loses accuracy. Then how can we got both, both accuracy and hardware performance simultaneously? Then let's see, revisit what we have done. So first, we need to determine a specific regularization and regularity degree, like the pruning scheme, like how regular this pruning is. We're going to eliminate the whole rows, whole columns, or we're going to uh, eliminate an arbitrary location. And then we're going to perform compression and train the weights. So, so far we have solved the second one. This ADMM-based pruning is at least one of the state-of-the-art pruning technique. Of course, uh, recently we have proposed a re-weighted uh, regularization and achieves even better results. But the first one we haven't solved. We haven't determined a specific regularity degree, and then we are going to achieve both accuracy and performance. So we have, in order to solve this problem, we have proposed a number of fine grain structure pruning techniques, and this kind of schemes can solve this problem. So the first one is the pattern-based pruning. So for the pattern-based pruning, we use this kernel as one example, these filters, and these filters is consist of three by three kernels. So in pattern-based pruning, we are going to assign a, kernel, a pattern for each kernel. We can see that this is from a pattern library. We can see that there are different types of kernels, and then each, each kernel can assign each type of pattern and then train the ways and then uh, all the kernel can be completely eliminated. So the ways on this pattern will be remained, and then those will be arbitrary values, but the rest of the ways will be eliminated. So we're going to select these patterns from a predefined pattern library, and this library will be automatically generated. So during training and compression, we're going to train the ways on the pattern and then prune the rest of the ways. And we have extended the pruning algorithm to do so. So next, we're going to discuss why the pattern-based pruning is both accurate and hardware friendly. The first is accuracy. So at the theory level, this kind of patterns can achieve a higher capacity of feature extraction. 
And this can be proved using uh, the uh, 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 theory of the Laplacian and of the Gaussian kernels. And uh, we can see the, uh, some examples in the feature extraction capacity. Actually, we can see that the, uh, the one on the right is the feature extraction using our patterns, and then the left is the full network. So we can see that actually it got a higher capacity compared with a full network. And at the algorithm level, actually we got higher accuracy thanks to the overfitting elimination and also uh, the fitness with the feature extraction. Like for the ResNet, is consistently improves the top accuracy. And the next one is the speed up. So this kind of pattern seems a little bit irregular, but in fact it is not. Because we are going to limit the number of patterns. And also the patterns have the same computation load. So at the compiler level, we can do the automatic code generation with a filter and channel reordering. We're going to group the same patterns together, and then we're going to assign to one thread and assign to each of the cores, and the parallelism can be optimized. In this way, we can maintain both the high instruction and the thread level parallelism. At the hardware level, why we are going to maintain the four input patterns? Because we need to match the SteamD structure of the mobile CPU or GPU. In the mobile CPU and GPU, each instruction can deal with four data, or maybe eight data. Previously, the data in one kernel is three by three. So because three by three is nine, and nine cannot be divided by four, so it is three clock cycles. But now we are going to maintain only four entry. So we are going to have uh, uh, on one clock cycle, we can deal with one kernel. So we can have an acceleration of three times, which can be significant. So this kind of pattern-based pruning can be generalized to the deconvolutions. Uh, the deconvolutions is actually a key computation in the LiDAR-based detection, like point pillars, and also the generative adversarial networks. So this kind of decounts is essentially convolution plus interpolation, and then we see some example of the generalization of the patterns here, and then we're going to skip the discussions. The next one is the block-based pruning. So previously, we see the pattern-based pruning are mainly used in three by three convolutions and beyond, or larger. But what about the one by one convolutions, or fully connected layers? Then we can propose a block-based pruning that applies to all different types of layers. The left shows the weight tensor format and the right shows the weight matrix format. The block-based pruning can be used both for the tensors and also for the matrix. For the tensors, we're going to have the M filters and N channels as one block. As we can see, the pruning shape in each block are going to be maintained the same. On the right, we can see for each of the weight matrix, we're going to divide into different blocks. And for each block, we are going to eliminate the corresponding rows and the columns. And each of the block can perform independent row and the column pruning. So through the algorithm and the compiler's perspective, those two are equivalent. And we have extended the algorithms for the automatic pruning to automatically determine the pruning rate and hope for each block and also to train the weights. So the block-based pruning has a wide applicability. It can be applied to the convolutional layers of different sizes, fully connected layers, recurrent neural networks, and the transformers. And it can be even be generalized to the 3D convolutions, as an example can be seen here. And this can be used to accelerate the real-time execution of the activity detections where the 3D convolutions is needed and the third dimension is time. So now we see why the block-based pruning can achieve a high accuracy and also compiler assisted high speed up. For the accuracy, this is understandable because compared with the prior work, that if we train a smaller neural network, 
we need to eliminate the whole rows or whole columns and to make the overall matrix small. But here we have the flexibility in the independent pruning in each block. So the accuracy will be higher. And this can be fully automatic in our pruning algorithm. And the second is a high hardware performance. Why high hardware performance? Because the remaining computation in each block can still achieve the maximum parallelism on the device. Generally, the whole weight matrix or weight tensor can be quite large. Even if we are going to divide into a number of blocks, there may be millions or even uh, tens or hundreds of millions of computations. Even if we divide into blocks, the remaining computation in each block is still a matrix and still can take the full parallelism on the mobile CPU or GPU. So in this way, suppose that we have the same pruning rate, we got the same acceleration compared with directly training a smaller neural network. And this overhead can be minimized by compilers. So we can see that we can exploit the advantage of both structured and non-structured pruning while eliminating the disadvantages. We can see this is a result that the y-axis is actually the top one accuracy of a RAS950, and the x-axis is the latency. We can see that the unstructured pruning, which is shown here, I mean, we are using the six times pruning for all layers, has the highest accuracy, which is almost no accuracy loss. And the structure pruning got a significant accuracy loss, which can be seen on the triangle uh, tri uh, 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 here. But it is the fastest. On the other hand, we can see our pruning series. As we can see here, with the block size from 8 by, 8 by 4 to 32 by 4, we can see that they are here. We can see that they are almost the same accuracy as a non-structured pruning and almost the same speed compared with a structured pruning or directly training a smaller neural network. So we can claim that somewhat we can achieve a high accuracy and a high performance together. So this is the advantage of this set of pruning. So based on this, we have a complete story of the compression compilation co-design, which is in this year's communications of ACM as a featured article with interviews announced together with a Turing Award. So here we have a fine grained structure pruning schemes that the input is a deep learning application or a model, and through the automatic selection of the prunings or combination of the network search, and our output is a graph-based representation of the compressed neural network. And then for the compiler parts, the input is a graph-based representation of the compressed neural network. And with the graph level optimizations, we change into the IR. And here we have a unique fusion here. And then we have a number of optimizations like the sparse supports and also the filter channel uh, pruning, filter and channel reordering. And then we have a faster auto-tuning technique compared with before, and we generate the output codes. And those uh, software codes can be directly gen executed on the mobile. Those will be the C++ codes for the mobile CPU or OpenCL or OpenGL codes for the mobile GPU, which can be directly executable. So here we have our own compiler technology. And we have proposed further a joint neural network pruning and a network search and architecture search that we are going to start from arbitrary neural networks and then we are going to find jointly the neural network architecture that is suitable for the uh, compiler optimization and also suitable for pruning and also the pruning search. So this one is accepted in this year's CVPR as an oral paper. So it's just a summary of the results. So our compiler is currently even the fastest compiler, even without pruning. As we can see, our latest compiler is actually accepted in this year's PLDI, which is a major compilers conference. And uh, we can see our compiler, which is named the DNNF here with advanced fusion techniques, achieved the highest efficiency, the highest speed 
com on this set of neural networks. Comparing with the prior compilers like Alibaba MNN or TVM or TensorFlow Lite or PyTorch Mobile, we can see that we can support both the mobile CPU and GPU for all of these neural networks. And for all of these neural networks, we achieve a higher speed up compared with those prior ones. So if we can see what we can achieve on a mobile phone, like this Samsung Galaxy S10 as a mobile phone, on the mobile CPU or mobile GPU. We take the mobile GPU as an example, where the X axis is actually the mobile GPU latency and the Y axis is a top one accuracy of ImageNet. We can see that with a level of 78.2% ImageNet accuracy, what we can achieve is this star point, which is 6.7 millisecond inference time. With a mobile net with three level accuracy, which is 75%, what we can achieve is less than six millisecond. And uh, with mobile net V2 level, our speed is 3.9 millisecond. So this is our speed ups. And our new result is 45 millisecond on the BERT and 150 millisecond on GPT-2. So even GPT-2 can be close to real time on the mobile. So we can potentially achieve the real-time execution of all neural networks. So here we can see the results on the Yulu. So this is the object detection on the Microsoft Coco dataset. We can see the x-axis is MAP and the y-axis is a frame per second. And here is a Pareto optimal trade-off of our techniques. All of these are based on our compiler because the prior compilers are even either didn't start some support or is even slower. We can see here that our Pareto optimal trade-off can achieve a simultaneously higher accuracy and a higher frame per second compared with uh, prior structures like SSD or tiny versions of Yolo v3 or OV4. But on the other hand, so we can simultaneously have an accuracy improvement of almost 20 MAP, and we can achieve the similar speed. So compared with Yulu V3, we can achieve almost five times speed up with the same accuracy. So this shows our advantage of our techniques. So this is our techniques, uh, our, our results, and those are the smaller models. So if we can see the LiDAR-based auto-driving, for these uh, point pillars techniques, as we can see, what we can achieve is less than 100 millisecond, with an accuracy even higher compared with the original point pillar. We must say that this kind of LiDAR-based neural networks are very redundant. So it has a significant margin of model compression given our compression techniques, and the accuracy is even increased. We can see we reduce the size by 15 times and also reduce the computation by 15 times and accelerate by six times and actually the accuracy is higher compared with the original point pillars. So with our compression compilation co-design, we can see again see all of these benchmarks and we can see that when we measured on the Samsung Galaxy S10 under the same accuracy as the original network, we can see we can make most of the networks real time. As long as it is less than 10, uh, 100 milliseconds, it is somewhat like real time. This kind of C3D and I3D, this kind of thing is 16 frames. So for each frame, we are almost, we are of course, real time. For the BERT series, the real time requirement is not very strict because it is natural language processing. So the 100 or 200 milliseconds can be considered as real time. And the only one that is difficult to real time on a mobile phone is actually the faster RCNN and the mass RCNN, which is very large networks, which is supported in none of the prior mobile devices. At least we can support it. So except for the largest neural networks, for most of the common used ones, I mean, we can make it real time. So mobile devices is not only limited to mobile net. Actually, it can support all type of neural network even the full precision of Yulu. 
So if we compare with the other software frameworks, like the TensorFlow Lite, TVM, MAN, or PyTorch Mobile, we can see that from the model coverage, we can support a broader mobile a support of the different type of neural networks, as we listed in the previous table. And the speed, actually, we can get an average of 5.6 speed up compared with the fastest of them. And then we got uh, more than 14 times speed up compared with the slowest. So this is a reason that we can be real time in video, and we have a number of demonstrations. So and the prior work, they can, it's difficult to be real time on video because they're much slower. So if we see a closer breakdown of the improvements, we can see an optimized compiler can give 50% time, 50% to three times speed up, especially using the fusion techniques. And then with an effective pruning, we can get or model compression or network search, we can get two times to 10 times potential speed up. But this kind of thing cannot be leveraged without the compiler support. So if we can combine them together, this will be a multiplication of the effect and then we can get a three times to almost 20 times gain in the actual speed up. So with our compressions, actually we can get even a higher speed up or higher energy efficiency compared with dedicated AI accelerators. We can see with the Google TPUs, we can get a higher energy efficiency. With the NVIDIA Xavier, we also got a higher energy efficiency when we are executing on a mobile phone. So this shows that on a general purpose device, with this kind of techniques, we can boost it to be a similar performance or at least a similar energy efficiency compared with a dedicated AI accelerator and compare and com uh, uh, combined with dedicated AI accelerator, we can also boost further boost the accuracy and performance. So this is a comparison with a prior work on the IPGAs. And we are on the mobile phone. We can see the X axis is a top end accuracy and the Y axis is energy efficiency. And this is on the ImageNet and we have found all the prior work on the IPGs and have put it here. And we can see that under the same top end accuracy, we got almost one order magnitude higher energy efficiency. And with the same energy efficiency, we got 2%, 3% higher accuracy. So we can see a significant advantage of our techniques. So why is that? So it seems a little bit surprising that if we are using a more general purpose mobile CPU or GPU and got a high energy efficiency. So we can compare with some prior work and then we see a range of the pruning. So this is actually on a gated recurrent neural network. You, and on an RNN on the teammate data set, and we are comparing with a prior IPJ work. We see that even we, if we can have a significant pruning and the energy efficiency, of course, can have a significant improve, uh, improvement, but the accuracy will have a loss. But the thing here is that even if we have no prune, so this is a new, the old neural network, we even didn't do quantization, we're using for uh, 16 base floating point, and we got 88% energy efficiency compared with the IPJ. And this IPJ uses pruning and also uses sparsity. So we can see that the smartphone itself, the mobile CPU and GPU itself, has a very high energy efficiency and it has a high potential because it's using a very advanced technology like 5 nanometer, 7 nanometer, 7 nanometer and it's actually the driving force of the technology advancement. So actually the prior work, they just didn't make the full use of the energy efficiency on a mobile phone. And it doesn't try to use all types of neural networks. And we just release the potential of the neural and of the mobile devices. So some actual demonstrations on the real-time AI on mobile, we can see the automatic style transfer that we can have an input style and then we have an output style. And the resolution upscaling, that the input is a low resolution and the output is a high resolution. Automatic coloring, that the input is a black white and the output is a colorful video. Uh, so ULO V4 based object detection. And this kind of thing, we can get 55 milliseconds per frame, with, uh, which outperforms by 12, 12 times. And also can be detect other things. And the 3D object detection, 
uh, activity detection, we can get actually now less than seven millisecond per frame. And this outperformed the prior work by 40 times speed up. So we have many other applications and uh, have our demonstration links. And then we have a selected media coverage and also the uh, uh, under the acknowledgement and uh, funding supports. And we have our uh, YouTube channels. Uh, so please uh, search if you are interested. Thank you very much. OK, uh, thanks for a very great and interesting talk. So uh, I think uh, there could be some question from the audience. Uh, we still have uh, five minutes for the questions. OK, anyone have questions? Hey, this is Kushal. I just I don't have a question, but so initially, it looks like it's a very aggressive pruning technique. Uh, so I, my intuition was that why not use it in training, but you already walked us through that part. So I think I don't have a question there, but the results looks amazing. Um, but, but one open that I, again, this, uh, this is just a note that I, I don't think that especially uh, cloud customers who are using recommendation models or big NLPs, they have a, they will give you 2% budget for accuracy loss. So in those cases, I don't know how this aggressive pruning will, how can they benefit, right? Typically I've seen some, they are, they, they are even have an allergic reaction to 1% trading loss. They say 0.1% or something like that. So that's a, that's something to be cognizant of. That's it. Yes, sure. Uh, so this is a very good question. Uh, so actually for the uh, NLP uh, solutions, actually we are not using that aggressive pruning techniques. I mean, for the bird or the bird large, we can still have this kind of pruning and we didn't have much accuracy loss. And on the other hand, for the tiny bird or the mobile bird, actually for this kind of thing, actually we are going to have a compiler aware search. Uh, so we are going to making it more compiler aware and using the compiler fusion techniques to get a high better solution. As we can see from the effects here, I mean, um, I mean, and the pruning is just an introduction. Actually, we have a variety of the techniques, and and also with combination of the compiler optimizations. As we can see, our framework here compared with Center for Light, we got a, also a significant acceleration, and all of them are under the same accuracy. We didn't harm any accuracy here. We even didn't do quantization here because they are very sensitive to quantization as well. Yes. Hopefully that this answers your question. We didn't, I mean, those kind of comparisons are under the same accuracy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yep. Okay, thank you, Kusa. Uh, so any other question? Uh, if no, uh, so I have a question on the yeah. By looking at this table, uh, for some model like compare with uh, between CPU and GPU, some model have uh, much faster on like a GPU compared to CPU, but some model are not. So just wondering uh, if this approach uh, have like a, a way of uh, uh, hardware or uh, why some model have much better performance compared to the other model. Mm, so sorry, can you give an example? I mean, because I think the GPU is, in our techniques, the GPU is almost always faster compared with CPU. Yes, so my question is uh, for some model, like uh, two times faster, but some model are uh, uh, much less. Like uh, for example, for the, the bad base model, uh, GPU is at uh, 205, and uh, CPU is 276. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but uh, for the other model, for example, the efficient net uh, GPU is almost two times faster than the CPU. Okay, yeah, this is a very good question. Actually, the uh, BERT and this kind of NLP uh, solutions, those are very deep neural networks. Uh, so compared with uh, the efficient net. Uh, so, so seen from the compiler's level, I mean, this kind of BERT can be even 1,000 layers or even more. Uh, so the GPUs, because their parallelism degree is higher than the CPUs, so a frequent input and output will harm the uh, parallelism and the, the acceleration. 
So this is uh, the most important reason. Uh, but this is already largely mitigated by our techniques of uh, the, an adaptive fusion technique, which is an advanced fusion technique to reduce the input and outputs. So we can already make the GPU faster than CPU. If we do not have this kind of fusion technique, I mean, GPU is even slower than CPU for this kind of uh, neural networks. But this cannot be validated because it's not supported in the prior work. Yeah, so another way to look at this question is uh, like what kind of model we can see like more speed up, more speed up from this uh, technique? Uh, from this technique, actually, we can see, uh, I think, um, I think the, the most speed up is the large models like the uh, C3D, this kind of uh, activity detection models and also BERT models. Uh, yeah, because we can deal with a large scale models and the prior work, uh, we can shrink the size, we can make it compiler aware, we can fuse uh, the computation to reduce unnecessary input and outputs. While, while the prior work, they really didn't optimize for the large scale networks. So yeah, they mainly works on the mobile net or similar networks. Okay. So, yeah, so if we can see on the mobile net, mobile net series, like the mobile net v3, we didn't have I mean, we are already faster than the prior war, but not that fast. Yeah, and also some of the mobile nets can be less than 10%, 10 milliseconds already in TensorFlow Lite, say. Uh, so this is already an old version of TensorFlow Lite. Recently, they have improved the mobile net, less than 10%, less than 10. Um, but the, for some large scale networks, I mean, the prior war doesn't support very well. Yeah, this is because of focus. I mean, we see that the large scale networks, because of prior, previously people believed that uh, I mean, large scale network cannot be used on mobile, but we think differently. We think that to expand the uses of the neural network, we need to support all types of neural networks. Okay, yeah, thanks very much for the great talk. Uh, thanks again for uh, all the questions from audience. Uh, if you have more questions, please uh, post another question, and uh, I think uh, Professor can answer that offline. Okay.